What's up guys, I'm Phoenix Master one and welcome back to another episode of Finessing Your Formas. So this month we're gonna be getting Genealogy Hall of Forms, featuring the Air of Light units, Altena, Larce, Shannon, and Sed. So I'll be going over what I think of these units and if they're worth your free-to-play Pharma Soul or not. And we also have Celesteel Stones, which can give you the Pharma Soul. So I'll be going over the best skills that you should try to get on them if you're trying to use a Pharma Soul and if you're interested. And even if you're buying Pharma Souls, it's really important to get the bank for your buck. And I always try to make these videos well in advance so that you guys have time to plan out what kind of skills you want to run on these units. So if you do end up enjoying, I would really appreciate it if you could drop a like and subscribe as I do make these videos for every single Hall of Forms. And if you do end up having any kind of doubt or misconception about Hall of Forms or just any kind of basic question, then I do have a comprehensive Pharma guide in the description so you can check that out. And I highly recommend you do that before redeeming your Pharma soul. So the first unit that I'm going to be taking a look at is going to be Altena, and she's from the 3 star 4 star pool, and I didn't really expect her to be in this Hall of Forms because of that, but still she's here, and uh, she's definitely going to be a unit that a lot of people try to plus 10 merge, and if you're one of those people who have her at plus 10 merge, and if you need some premium skills, or if you're trying to make her as a merge project, then it's definitely going to be worth it trying to go for her. Some people might ask, why go for a 3 star 4 star unit with a pharma soul instead of going with a 5 star locked unit? And the answer to that is basically the premium skills. Because if you had to get these premium skills otherwise you would have to spend hundreds upon hundreds of orbs. So Earthly Gable is the preferred weapon of Altena. And back when it came out it was definitely pretty unique. But now it's nothing really too special because we have Flowing Lance. Which is exactly the same thing having that lull attack defense and it does have the solo condition. On the other hand, Earthly Gabolg doesn't have that solo condition, but it only works on infantry, armored, and cavalry units. So she can inflict that lull attack defense on those foes, and her debuffs are gonna be minus five attack and defense. Against most of the physical flyers, she's not really gonna be taking that much damage, so it doesn't really matter too, too much. And she can be a pretty good melee tank, a melee specialist, essentially with her stat spread. She does have pretty high defense for that, and also has pretty respectable attack stat. Lance Flyers are incredibly competitive, and Altena does face competition from Seteth, who's also in the 3 star 4 star pool. And even though he doesn't have insanely high defense like her, he's still the better Lance Flyer overall because of having better preferred weapon, having better resistance, and a weapon that can support his allies is also pretty good. So only go for Altena in Hall of Forms if she is already a plus 10 unit for you, or you're a big fan of her, and she's one of your favorites, or a merch project. Before I move on to her builds, I really want to focus on this one skill which is going to be the main aim of getting your Pharma Altena, which is getting access to Wyvern Flight, which is a very premium skill, only available on one 5 star locked unit, Melody. So Wyvern Flight is going to be the ideal slot B skill that you want to go for. Unfortunately, the Trace skills are not going to be available in this Hall of Form, so that's why Wyvern Flight is going to be the best option that you could go for on Altena. So this skill basically checks your visible speed stat and defense stat for it to work and then you get the in combat debuffs depending on the difference between the defense stat of your unit and the opponent. So you need to meet that threshold of speed to activate the skill and this skill is pretty lenient compared to Pegasus Flight when it comes to speed check. So you're allowed to be 10 points slower than the unit that you're trying to trigger the skill against. For example, if Altana has got 35 speed then she can trigger the skill against a foe who has got 45 speed. And that's pretty much gonna be how you're gonna be trying to use Wyvern Flight. Use visible speed stat, use her speed super boon, use visible speed buffs like Hone Flyers and stuff like that, and use Blessings. So the first build is gonna be having Fury 4 because like I said, it does work with your visible speed and defense and Fury 4 does help you with that visible speed stat. I'm showing you speed IVs and also plus and dragon flowers, even though you cannot get that in Hall of Forms, because you're pretty much gonna be needing to run this kind of max investment Altena with Vibrant Flight for it to really work. It's a very high investment skill, especially the trade fruits, which you'll have to use on this Pharma unit to get the speed super boon. But if you like her a lot, then this is definitely gonna be worth it with the Wyvern Flight build. And I've seen a lot of Ashnards run Pegasus Flight, Wyvern Flight as well. So Altena can definitely work out with that Speed Super Boon. And that is the best way of using her in my opinion. So the first build is going to be pretty good. And for her weapon, 
you can just go with Spirited Spear, Candy Cane Plus, or its Curtains. They are all of these are just alternate options because the units already come with their preferred weapon. All of these are pretty solid and in some cases are gonna be better than Earthly Gabolg, like Candy Cane's guard effect can be pretty good, and its curtains can actually be a pretty good one-tap Gale Force weapon. So you can go with that depending on whichever one you prefer. It's just up to your preference. I personally prefer its curtains, and uh, after that, probably Candy Cane. The second build uses Fortress Defense Res, so Altena doesn't really have much trouble activating the defense check against the opponents because she has such a high defense stat, but still, maxing this out with Fortress Defense is going to be helping you quite a lot. And you want to run Wyvern Flight again, and in slot C, Attack Speed Rain is going to be the best skill that you could run. Now, even though Wyvern Flight works on the visible uh, speed stat and defense stat, Attack Speed Rain is still good because it helps you with your overall bulk, and speed is also a kind of a defensive stat because if you're going to be speed stacking her, just giving her the speed buffs, then she can actually avoid doubles from many of the opponents and even double them herself without even requiring cooked or post in many situations. So attack speed rain is highly, highly recommended on a Wyvern Flight Altena. And if you don't really care too much about increasing her visible stats and you're just going to be buffing her up, then attack defense unity is actually not a bad option because those are two of her main stats. So that could be run uh, to deal with the debuffs. You can also use Distant Foil with IO Shield and she does have really good defense stats so she can definitely take on many of the archers and the dagger units. Her resistance isn't the highest but still you can run Distant Counter if you want to here and uh, Distant Foil is also a pretty good option overall. Steady Posture 3 is also an option with Vibrant Flight build even though you know like I said <laughs> it checks for the visible speed stat still if you're just going to be buffing her up and supporting her really well, then Steady Posture can give you the guard effect, which is really good, and also gives you extra speed and defense, which is absolutely amazing for a tank like her, and that can just allow her to prevent many of the doubles. But if you don't really care about Wyvern Flight and you find it a bit gimmicky or hard to work with, then you pretty much have to go with Guard Bearing. I personally prefer running Wyvern Flight on her, and I would really recommend that because she is one of the few units who can use it really well, and Guard Bearing is already present in the Divine Codes section, so it's not the hardest skill to get, unlike Wyvern Flight. So if you're not really interested in that, then you can go with Guard Bearing, Sturdy Sans 3, and Attack Defense Rain, and Courtly Candle can help you with the damage reduction along with Guard Bearing, and this Courtly Candle is only recommended if you're not going to be going for the Speed Super Boon, because you need the opponent to double you in order to get the damage reduction and Sturdy Stance can give you the guard effect, which is really good for any kind of tank. Shannon is a pretty good sword infantry unit with his preferred weapon, Balmung, so it gives him plus 3 speed, and it's always going to be active in the enemy phase. If you want to use this in player phase, then you want to make sure that the opponent is at full HP, and if those conditions are met, then he can neutralize any kind of penalties on him and get plus 5 to all of his stats. So penalty neutralization is a very very powerful tool because debuffs are just so common but unfortunately for Shannon he does face competition from the other sword infantry units and male Chris is essentially gonna be slightly better Shannon because of having better resistance and balanced bulk is actually gonna be much more preferable for tanks most of the time because resistance is a very important stat. Shannon does not have a lot of it but still like Shannon is gonna be one of those units which many of his fans are going to be trying to get because he does require some overhaul to his base kit. His slot skill is decent, but slot B and slot C definitely need changing. He will already come with Balmung and Imperial Astra. Imperial Astra being same as Dragon Astra, just with a different name, and it's a special that scales off based off his speed, so speed stacking is very powerful on him. Even though Shannon is a really good unit, I wouldn't really recommend you to uh, use your free to play Pharma Soul unless you really like him. Um, because one-off copy of Shannon is not really going to be that good. And again, you need some merges on him to really justify it with your free-to-play Pharma. And if you buy Pharma Souls as it is, and you have a lot of them lying, and you just like Shannon, then yeah, he can be a pretty good unit, honestly, with the premium skills. So for his weapon, you can go with anything that you like aesthetically. Most of the time, you're going to be using Balmung, so this is just going to be an alternate weapon. Unbound Blade Plus is actually available in this Hall of Forms, so that could be obtained. And Bellringer Plus is also a decent and funny option. You can go with Ruptured Sky just as an alternate special, even though Imperial Astra is just going to be the preferred special. We're just trying to get the alternate options here. Now let's move on to the main skills. For Slotty, you can basically run Distant Foil to make use of his high defense stat. And he can basically be like a red Rinka, 
with that. And uh, you can run Spurn 3 as his damage reduction skill. And Time Pulse can allow you to retaliate back with your Imperial Astra. Time Pulse is not going to be as good on him as it is on someone like Ira or Larsay because he doesn't get minus one special cooldown from Bile Monk. So Time Pulse is a good option, but I honestly prefer something like Joint Drive Speed on him, which is going to be active in the enemy phase all the time. He's mainly going to be used as an enemy phase unit, and Time Pulse just helps you in the first combat, but Joint Drive Speed helps you against multiple opponents. So that's pretty much my opinion. Both of these are good options, but I prefer the Joint Drive skill. You can also run Attack Speed Solo 4 instead of Distant Foil if you want to just maximize on his speed stat and his offenses. And Damage Reduction in Slot B is just going to be a fantastic option on a unit like him. You can also go with Null Follow Up if you want to use him in something like Ether Raids. And Null Follow Up is a pretty good option in general on a fast unit like him. If you have a couple of merges on Shannon, then you can definitely go with Distant Counter over Distant Foil. Because even though he has got low resistance, with merges it is going to be fine and he can also get the damage reduction and also the extra stats from his weapon. So he's not going to be as bad as he appears to be for taking on mages at the first glance because he is pretty fast and damage reduction helps quite a lot. So this encounter can be done if you have a couple of merges. And then finally you can run Pulse Smoke over Joint Drive Speed or Time Pulse if you aim to use him in Aether Raid's offense. He's actually a pretty good unit in Aether Raid's offense because the debuff neutralization effect on Balmung is really crazy and invaluable for Aether Raids. So if you plan to use him there, then definitely, definitely try to get Pulse Smoke. And you can even get Null Follow Up if you want to use him in the Light Season because that will make it easier for you to take care of Bramimond. Larsay is also another Sword Infantry unit, and Larsay's Edge is a pretty good weapon giving her minus one special cooldown, which puts Regnal Astra at one cooldown, which is absolutely amazing. And it basically requires her to win the speed check, and if she wins, or if the foe is at full HP, then she can get plus four to all of her stats and neutralize any kind of visible buffs on the foes. So this kind of effect can be really useful as buffs are pretty common in many of the game modes. But even though Larsay is a pretty good Sword Infantry unit, I do feel like she does face insane amount of competition from stuff like her own mother, Ira, who got a really fantastic weapon refine. And I definitely think that Ira is better than Larsay because she just gets the flat damage reduction. She can run Null Follow Up while also having the damage reduction and her weapon just ignores the card effect. So she's much better at spamming Regnal Astra than her daughter. And there's also Marita, of course, who's going to be a really, really good Sword Infantry unit. So Larsay is good, but like she's not the best, essentially. She's still really good, don't get me wrong. And even though like Larsay is a good unit, I don't think she gives you that much value if you use her as a Pharma unit or buy her as a Pharma unit. Let me explain why. The main reason is that she already comes with a really good base kit. And having a good base kit can actually be a disadvantageous um, reason for getting a Pharma unit because your premium skills are not really going to be as essential to their playstyle. She already comes with a solo skill Repel, which is quite good and gets the job done with her playstyle. There are of course premium skills that you would like on her, but compared to someone like Shannon or Altena who need like a full overhaul, Larsay doesn't really need that and even with her base kit she can work just fine. With that said, she's still one of the better one-off copy units from and like these Hall of Forms, being an offensive unit and not really being a support unit. But still, like I said, you don't really get value from the Pharma Soul that much because she already comes with a fantastic base kit. Regnal Astra is just amazing. But still, if you really like her and if you want to get merges on her, then you can definitely try to go for some of the premium skills, which you can definitely appreciate at max investment. So for her weapon, you're always going to be using her preferred weapon, so we can try to spice things up and maybe get funny weapon like Bell Ringer and that's a 5 star lock seasonal weapon and then uh, you basically want to go with Distant Counter on a Slotty. That's the best skill that you could run on her because she's a fantastic tank just ignoring those visible buffs. She already comes with Repel 3 which is a damage reduction skill so I don't really think you should try to go for Spurn just for that extra 5 damage. I think Null Follow Up is way more worth so try to get that for her slot B. And Time Pulse is basically going to be the best Slotsy skill that you could run on her. Same reason as Ira, you can have Pre-Charge Regnal Astra. And that can allow you to hit twice against uh, many of the foes if they counter-attack in the player phase. And when you're going to be tanking, even if you're facing a unit with Guard, you can still retaliate back with Regnal Astra. So that is a very powerful option. If you want to use her in Aetherite's offense, then Pulse Smoke is going to be an option that you could get for her Slotsy over Time Pulse. 
but I feel like overall Ira and Shannon, like Shannon even from this patch is gonna be a much better unit in Aetherite's offense um, because of his better weapon, which is debuff neutralization. And at the end, if you already have disencounter on your Larsay, then you can go with Ninja Katana Plus, which is a fun weapon. I'll just opening up the quad attacking opportunities and Flashing Blade 4. Like I said before, uh, she doesn't exactly need these skills. She can still work with her base kit fine, but this is going to be worth more for you if you're trying to merge her up. And the final unit from this banner is going to be said. Uh, and it just makes me sad because they just shafted said so hard in Fey. Even when he came out, he wasn't really a deal breaker because his preferred weapon, Winds of Silice, is not a very good weapon in the modern times. And even back when uh, he came out, it was nothing really too special. Lewin had a better weapon before he got a weapon refine, just to give you an idea. And the competition is insane for the green infantry mages because we have got Pent, Ledring Celica, Thrusir, Young Merrick, and Sed is unfortunately not going to be uh, very impressive in that regard. Still, if you're a big fan of Sed, then you can definitely try to get him here. He definitely needs a couple of premium skills. Winds of Silice just gives you the plus 3 speed and it just has attack speed solo built into it. And that's pretty much it. And that's just not gonna be enough. It was not enough back when he came out as well. But still here are some of the builds if you're a big Sed fan and if you want to get him with some premium skills. So you cannot really go wrong with the attack speed solo 4 and slot A. That's definitely his best slot A option. And for his weapon, try to get Plagian Torch Plus. It's actually a pretty good alternate weapon uh, compared to Winds of Silice. You do get better damage output at the cost of losing the speed. So it also has the solo condition. And that's why you cannot really go wrong with a solo skill in slot A with even the alternate weapon Plagian Torch. For his slot B, you can go with Null Follow Up, which is going to be helping a fast unit like him break through the follow-up negation skills and time pulse can also help you you can even run it with desperation and have a two-turn cooldown special which you can easily trigger and you can also run attack speed push 4 if you do not get attack speed solo 4 so sparrow 3 is also an option but honestly attack speed solo 4 is the best option that you could get for a slot a lot speed resistance is also a really good option and finally if you want to run him uh, with special spiral then you could do that with a two-turn cooldown special Rouse skills do have synergy with Plating Torch, with Winds of Silice, and also the Attack Speed Solo 4. So it's overall going to be pretty synergetic. And you pretty much have to choose what kind of slot B you want on him. Um, I feel like Loud Speed Resistance is going to be a bit better, and that's what I prefer. For a slot C, Time Pulse is going to be the best option because you can still buff him up without the Rouse attack speed by just using the tactic skill. Overall, I feel like this patch is decent and is better than the Echoes patch, which we had last time, because we have got Shannon and Larsay present here. Still, I wouldn't say that any of these units are a must-have, and you should use your free-to-play Pharma Soul, and you should definitely try to save. And none of these units are extremely good as a one-off copy, and the bottom line is always going to be, if these are your favorite units or merch projects, then yeah, it is going to be worth going with the Pharma Soul, trying to get the premium skills, because those premium skills are really hard to come by, especially for a free to play player. So those are going to be the FE4 units, this Hall of Forms, and the next Hall of Forms next month is going to be featuring Thracia 776 units. And this is just going to be my educated guess, because so far I've seen that these Hall of Forms in the second batch have followed a theme. The first one had White Wings, the second one had Fallen Units. Even Sonya did make sense with the Fallen theme, honestly, if you've played Echoes. In FE4 Hall of Farms, we have the Air of Light theme. So in FE5, which is Thracia 776, I think we're going to be having the Fianna theme. Fianna Freeblades, essentially, and um, I feel like they're probably not going to be putting Nana here. I think Tanya might be an option because we did just get a 3-star, 4-star unit in Altena. I feel like this would be a pretty good chance of uh, baiting out players with Marita. I can definitely see Intelligent Systems doing that. But if nothing else, then Shadow Marita or Fallen Marita can definitely be an option on this kind of Hall of Forms. There are not too many Thracia units and I don't really expect Dancer Reinhardt or Dancer Ishtar. Because last time we already got Reinhardt and Olwyn. So I'm expecting a Fianna theme basically on uh, the next Hall of Forms. So let's see how uh, how accurate this ends up being. 
So hope you all enjoyed this video. Make sure to share this video with your friends who are trying to get any of these units from the Hall of Forms. I went over a lot of the options and explained why you should go for them. And I want to thank all of my two members for their constant support. If you enjoyed, then please be sure to leave a like and a comment. Helps me tremendously and be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Because YouTube sub boxes are about as functional as Earthly Gable against Flyers. So that's it, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.